Hi YouTube. I've been doing a series of videos on my borderline narcissistic sister-in-law titled Toxic Sister-in-Law. This is the fourth video in the series. If you haven't seen the other three, the link to the playlist is in the description box below. In this video, I'm going to read the 2012 word text message my toxic sister-in-law sent me about two months ago that finally prompted me and the kids to get out of this place and move away. I think she is dangerous, or at least unstable, and I don't want my kids or me anywhere near this woman, as she and my brother live in my parents' house next door. She causes histrionic drama and even yelled at me for ten full minutes about how my children are disrespectful and that I'm not raising my children in a godly manner. She said she will not tolerate homosexuality or profanity in her presence and will run up the stairs crying if someone accidentally says a curse word at the dinner table, especially if that someone happens to be my daughter, who is gay. Now, the drama has been going on for the better part of a year. I avoid this woman like the plague. She lives next door, and so when I go outside, I have to look first to make sure she's not outside with her dogs. She's very paranoid and thinks every conversation is about her. Any time I would go over to my parents' house, she would find a reason to come running down the stairs and into the kitchen. My daughter has seen her on multiple occasions standing outside my mother's door listening in on my mother's phone conversations, but I guess narcissists always think everything is about them. There was even one time I was in the basement building a door out of some scrap wood for my chicken coop. Yes, I have chickens. With my dad and Christina came running down the wooden stairs into this mold-covered, spider-infested basement and opened the spare fridge pretending to look for something. I remember thinking, no one is talking about you. Unless you have feathers and you poop breakfast, you're not the topic of this conversation. I'm having with my dad. The drama ramped up a few months ago between her and my mother because Christina and my brother decided to become foster parents. They were unable to get pregnant on their own, so they decided to foster to adopt. I think they lied to the foster agency and let them think my parents' house was actually their house. Of course, there must be a shortage of foster parents because I don't know how they passed the psychological test to even get a baby, but they did. And as soon as they got a baby, Christina strong-armed my 80-year-old mother into babysitting the baby all day while she works. My mother has had major health issues this past year, including a couple mini-strokes, major surgery on her carotid arteries, and now a broken neck from a fall where she has to wear a neck brace. The doctor told her she was lucky she wasn't paralyzed. It was a dangerous situation asking an 80-year-old woman with memory issues and balance issues to carry a seven-month-old baby up and down the stairs, but Christina kept insisting that she could not find daycare or afford it. Finally, she put the child in daycare, but only after my mother's health suffered. My mother complained to me every day on the phone how she was tired and sick all the time having to take care of a baby, but she was afraid to say anything to Christina because my sister-in-law would give her the silent treatment if she ever spoke up. Now, in retrospect, I should have never offered my opinion or advice on the phone to my mother because I would learn later that everything I said to my mother would go straight back to Christina. See, I'm the black sheep, or the scapegoat of the family, but I liked that my mother wanted to talk to me and confide in me. It was all a trap, just like the time they invited me to dinner and then I was put on trial as being the family scapegoat. I know this is a long explanation about this text message, but context is important in narcissistic abuse. To the outside, people might not see the abuse that's taking place. The old saying, you have to walk a mile in someone's shoes, is absolutely true. So I received this text message from my sister-in-law one morning after I'd gotten off work in the ER. I was grocery shopping before I came home and my mother called. She had some medical concerns about the baby. The baby had been sick for a few days and I told my mother that was normal since she just started daycare and that she would probably get sick a few times because of the germs in the daycare. It's normal for kids of that age to get runny noses. She said that another child at the daycare had RSV or the flu, she wasn't sure which, but that the daycare had been giving breathing treatments at the daycare. Now, I don't know if she meant the child was using an inhaler or if she meant an aerosolized, honest-to-goodness Duoneb through a nebulizer, but I said if they're giving breathing treatments, they need to isolate the child in another room while they're getting the treatment because we learned during the pandemic that breathing treatments aerosolize viruses that are normally spread by droplets. They linger in the air longer and you can breathe them in. That was all I said. Apparently, my mother told Christina that and probably added her own spin to it. Whatever the case, it must have set her off. I've been yelled at and screamed at by Christina before. 
I've never raised my voice to this woman, and I avoid any contact with her. I have blocked her on all social media platforms, and like I said, I don't even leave my house if I see her outside. I don't go to my parents' house any longer because I feel like I'm not welcome. She and my brother watch me suspiciously, so the only way that she has any contact with me, I assume, is through whatever my mother says. So after this, I drove home, and about 30 minutes later, I received the text message below. I'm going to read it and provide context, and I apologize for how long this video may be. I'm surprised the woman doesn't have carpal tunnel syndrome in her thumbs from typing it. Anyways, here we go. I'm going to read it in her voice. I'm not trying to mock her. I just love doing voices and comedy. Also, I've changed the foster baby's name because Christina uses it several times in this text message. I actually had Ollie Matthews read this text message in a video on his channel, and it encouraged me to start my channel back up because I need a voice. I cut and pasted it and put it in a Word document, so now, so that's how I know that it's 2012 words long. Okay, here we go. Julia! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Um, that's my actual name. I don't like it because people call me Julie, and I really don't like that, like that name, so a lot of times I go by Raven. Um, hence the name Raven's Life Takes Flight. Occasionally I'll go by the nickname Jules, but, you know, Julia is my given name. Julia! Daniel and I have asked you multiple times not to make your comments and your snide remarks to your mum regarding us, and you have flat out refused to do that. Honestly, I feel like the reason you do it is because you are too, T.O., chicken to come out here and say all that to my face you are a bully and i'm here to tell you this is one person that you will not bully so already she's wanting me to come out to my mother's house and do what do what like fight on the lawn like we're in high school or middle school she's calling me a bully but she's the only one that's ever raised her voice and yelled and screamed you accuse me of using your mom as a go-between but you julia you are the one that's doing that you know Y-A, whatever that means. People who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. You make rules or make requests that you yourself don't even follow. They don't apply to you, but they apply to everyone else. You got a whole lot of cleaning up in your life before you try to start trying to tell someone how to run theirs. You constantly make your snide remarks and comments to your mom regarding me and things with Abigail, etc. And honestly, I am sick of it. Sick of you and sick of your mouth. And that's all in like caps. Daniel and I both are. Lots of exclamation points. You make everyone's business your business. You are so two-faced that it ain't even funny. And like I said, you don't have the guts to come out to the house and say the things to my face that I know you've said to your mom about me, about us fostering slash adopting. And now the things that you say about Abigail and how we are caring for her, etc. Like you think you could do any better? Right. I am a good mother to Abigail, and Daniel's a good daddy to her. No, we aren't her parents yet, but we are the parents. You need to get your own life together before you start talking about someone else's and offering up your opinion on how to parent, etc. And honestly, you don't need to offer any advice then either, because it's non, N-O-N, not N-O-N-E, because it's non of your business anyways, and it definitely wasn't asked for, especially with your kids as disrespectful as they are. Just like you, it's honestly a joke for you to offer any kind of advice like you got it all together. Right. Honestly. I'm honestly done with your crap. You have always got to have some kind of drama going somewhere. So you want to continue to run that mouth of yours? I encourage you to come out here and say all your mess face to face. Bring it. In all caps. Bring it? What, what does she want, to, want me to bring? So already... She's challenged me like three times to come out to my mother's house. I never go to my mother's house. Like I said, I stay far away from this woman, and now she's trying to bait me into an argument, trying to say I don't have my life together and that my kids are disrespectful. Now, at this time, the time it was sent, my kids were staying at my parents' house on the nights I worked in the ER. But since that happened, they've started staying on their own. They're teenagers anyways, and it was probably time for them to stay on their own. Plus, I told them after letting them see this text message that I didn't want them anywhere near Christina. But she says I don't have my life together. I guess being a successful charge nurse at a busy trauma ER and having two bachelor's degrees and being a nurse in the Army while raising two wonderful honor roll kids and now buying a house on my own means I don't have my life together. My mistake. Th thanks for pointing that out. 
Also, your mom told me the comments that you have made regarding that child getting their breathing treatment at Abigail's daycare and that they are spreading his germs in the air. News flash, Miss Nurse. The kids are playing with the same toys all day long for eight hours plus a day. So they're going to share germs. They're going to get sick. But it's also helping her and the other kids to build their immune systems, which is also good for her and them. Well, yeah, I took microbiology, so I know that. And you should have known that since you are a nurse and all, but maybe you just forgot. Nope, I took microbiology. I'm not even a nurse and I know that. You make some of the dumbest comments and they honestly make you look so ignorant. See there again, this is proof that anything I say to my mother probably gets taken out of context once my mom puts her spin on it. But yes, Christina, I do know that kids share germs, two bachelor's degrees talking here, and I'm also a pediatric nurse which she will try to say later in this text that I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to peds. So just to clue you in on something, not that you even care, but I thought I'd tell you anyway. Well, wait a minute. If she doesn't think I want to know, why is she telling me? You just said that I don't care. Oh, oh well, the craziness goes on. Daniel and I took Abigail to the doctor yesterday, and we told her, her doctor, DR, that you are a nurse and you... You had told your mom regarding the breathing treatments, regarding the daycare was given those to that child. Also, that you said that those breathing treatments were spreading germs through the air and making the other kids sick, and that's what aerosol does. And her reply to us regarding that was that that is the least of her concern as for us to disregard and ignore what you say, and that she would not worry about a child taking those breathing treatments, and she said exactly what I have said above that they are swapping toys and slobber all day long and for us to not worry about little breathing treatment. Also, that we are doing exactly what we are supposed to do for Abigail and that I have good instincts and to keep listening to them and I'm doing the right thing. You may be a nurse, but you're not her nurse and furthermore, not a pediatric nurse. Oh, actually, I actually am a pediatric nurse. Nor are you involved in any of her care. So your opinion, nor your advice, I guess she meant advice, is not needed or wanted. Last I checked, you are not responsible for Abigail in any way, shape, or form, nor are you on her fostering paperwork. So Daniel and I would appreciate it if you keep your nose in your own lane and handle your own children and stop trying to offer your advice and give your input on ours, because it definitely is not needed. I have several friends. She has friends? Well, I, I know she had friends. Oh, sorry, that was, that was me being mean. I have several friends that I know and I trust, and if need be, I can go to them for advice regarding anything medical or just parenting tips in general, etc. But you are not one of them that I would ever reach out to for advice in any regards. Now, mind you, if you weren't so condescending with your words and you actually made comments and statements that made sense and was someone that didn't backmouth and someone that we could count on, then that would be different. But you burned that bridge a long time ago and then burned it again with both of us. So no, we do not want your advice or your opinion in any matter. You also got to look, you always got to look at the negative in things, no matter what the cause. And you always have to offer your opinion on things when it's not even wanted or asked for. As far as what you said regarding the daycare and giving them, ch them that child those breathing treatments, if that was that, if I was that mother and if it was Abigail, that was having to get those breathing treatments, I would be very grateful to the daycare that they were able to give them those for me while I work and provide for my family so I could still work, etc., and not delay my child's care. But I guarantee you, you don't look at things like that. Again, always negative, Nancy. Okay, first of all, children can't even go to daycare if they're sick. If they have a fever, they have to be fever-free for 24 hours without medication. I know that, so if a child was that sick that the daycare was the daycare was not going to let the child come there with the flu or covid or rsv and spread it to the rest of the kids they have to be cleared by a doctor of course i found out later the pediatrician that they took them to was not actually not a pediatrician it was a pa at an urgent care and then they later on um, i found that out because they complained about the bill they said that the urgent care overbilled them anyways also, FYI, before Abigail could go back to daycare yesterday, she had to have a doctor's note clearing her. Got it. I, I got it. In which she did. So I guarantee you that that mother of that child was having to have those breathing treatments had to do the same and get a doctor's note to clear her, him to come back to daycare. If he had been out and went to the doctor, 
There's an old saying that describes know-it-alls like you. They know a whole lot about everything and a whole lot about nothing, and that describes you to a T. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Eight years of study, two bachelor's degrees, trauma nurse and pediatrics nurse certification, and years of ER experience, and I know absolutely nothing. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. Uh, how silly of me. I mean, sorry. It's just so ridiculous that she's trying everything in this text message to goad me and to get me into a fight, but I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I, I never even answered this text message. It's like what you said here a while back before we got foster placement. You made the statement to your mom that the social workers that you've had to deal with in the ER, you didn't like them. Well, truth be known, they probably didn't like you either. Like you make the dumbest comments and statements I've ever seen. There has to be a disconnect somewhere with you because you just say random crap and it honestly makes no sense. It's like you're lacking common sense. It's like you enjoy talking about other people and running them in the ground. Like you get a rise out of it. You have to be one of the most insecure people, oh, person, sorry, insecure person, the most non-compassionate person I've ever known. Like, for instance, saying that your mom buys Daniel better Christmas gifts than she buys you. Like, seriously, like, get over yourself. You're so jealous. It's almost comical. I think it makes you feel good because you can sit and run that mouth of yours, and honestly, everything that is coming out of your mouth is nothing but gibberish. Like, it's honestly nonsense. Now, this is in reference to the conversation I had with my mother over a year ago that I felt like I'm the scapegoat of the family. I was trying to tell my mother how I feel, and I couldn't use terms where she would understand how I've been treated. I used the example of the fact that every Christmas my brother got something very expensive, and if I wanted something, I got the cheapest thing they could buy. It's hard to explain to your family how they've treated you if, if they aren't willing to listen, but apparently... This woman has listened to every conversation I have ever had with my mother. Good grief. You are one of the most disrespectful people I have ever had to deal with, and your kids are learning from you. You are such a good teacher, especially in those regards. Also then, when your kids come out here on the nights that you have to work, and Daniel and I both have repeatedly asked them when they're coming out here that they are usually, we're usually trying to get Abigail down for the night and to please come in quietly, and they completely disregard everything that we have respectfully asked of them. They're teenagers, and sometimes they can be loud. My children are not disrespectful. My daughter is applying for West Point. My son's going to the early college, and they both take karate, that they have more integrity in their little fingers than she has in her entire round body. Sorry, when, when someone comes after my kids, I get hot under the collar. It's, it's one thing to say things about me, but when you make my kids a target, Mama Bear's going to come out. All right. Honestly, it's almost like they get louder when they come out now, since we've asked them to be quiet when they come out. Personally, I think it's out of spite. They come in talking loudly. They continue to let the front door slam and give no credit to what we have asked of them. For instance, last night when they were coming in, I was coming downstairs and your daughter was talking loudly and I said, shh. And then I went to the kitchen to make Abigail's bottle and your daughter looked at me and rolled her eyes. Just so disrespectful. Your kids have no respect whatsoever for anyone and neither do you. But they have learned from you. So honestly, I don't blame them. I blame you. Also, might I add, we have had Abigail in our care for almost two months now, and you have come out one time to see her. Oh, gee, I wonder why I've only been out there once. Hmm, it's a mystery. I feel so welcome in my mother's house. But I guess since you have seen her once, you think that entitles you to offer up your opinion. Well, here's another news flash for you. We don't want your advice nor your opinion. If we do, we will ask for it, but I highly doubt we will. Also, your kids, when they are out here, they walk right past Abigail and don't even acknowledge that she's even in the room. She looks at them, waiting for them to speak to her, and they just walk right by like she's not even there. Just like, like just rude. And she ain't even done anything to your kids to cause y'all to treat her this way. It honestly blows my mind. I wonder what it's going to be like once she notices how your kids act towards her. And then she looks at me and says, Mommy, why don't they talk to me? But if truth be known, I honestly don't think you care wh whose feelings you hurt, nor how you or your kids sound or act. You are so condescending with your words and how you talk to people, and your kids are following suit. Not a good trait to have. You made the statement here a while back to Daniel and I that you have, don't have any feelings. Also, I've heard that one of your supervisors has made the statement to you that you need to have more compassion. Honestly, you need to, hey, me, I don't even know what that means. What, what is she trying to say here? H-A-Y-M-E? 
Maybe have. Maybe she meant have more feelings. Honestly, you need to have more feelings and compassion if you're going to be taking care of patients. Just saying. S a y i n. She left the g off for some reason. But you know, th this baby is seven months old, and my kids. What? What? They're going to have a conversation with her about war and peace. It's like, what do you think about Leo Tol Tolstoy's um, work? Work of um, fiction, like. <laughs> Yeah, so she used she used to work at my hospital, so I can only surmise she's trying to say that she's heard one of my managers say something about me, where she's saying that she heard one of my managers say something. Um, I'll keep that in mind, seeing as how my managers just gave me a hospital-wide leadership award, and $1,000 was donated in my name to the Nursing Scholarship Organization for my leadership and mentoring skills of new nurse nurses. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. So with all this being said, I'll say it again, and just to break it down for you in case you need more clarification. We don't want your advice or your opinions or on how the things should be regarding Abigail or things with our life. You, mister, not in a good place to offer any of that. Mine and Daniel's life is exactly that. Mine and Daniel's. And things regarding us and Abigail is none of your concern. So mind your business. Keep your nose in your lane. Also, Daniel has read the text I'm sending you and agrees with all of the above. Sleep well, Christina. Whew, okay. I think I needed a glass of wine to get through that. Uh, see, she knew I was getting ready for bed that morning, so that's why she, she said sleep well. It bothers me to think that my brother agrees with everything in that text message. Honestly, I don't know if my brother has even seen this message, but this was the message that prompted me to finally move out of this place. I don't want to be around this woman, and I don't want my kids anywhere near her. There was so much projection in that email and so many negative comments and slurs, it, it seems like she was challenging me to a fight. I never answered this text message, but I did send it to my mother, and after reading it, she was angry at first, but then decided that I'm overreacting by wanting to move away and that my sister-in-law is not unstable or dangerous. I would love to read your comments below and any advice you can give. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment and a thumbs up. Take care.